All right, now is the time when we usually ask, uh, I know there are people in the audience who've had surgery, so if they want to come up and tell their story, they're welcome to. If they don't want, that's perfectly fine, then they can stay in the audience. But if they want to come up and share and answer questions, that will be the perfect time right now. Otherwise, Bob is here. Yep, you want to come up too? He is a regular here, um, and he will give you his story as well. Thank you for being so brave. <laughs> okay. All right. I'll hand the microphone over. My name is Bob, and I have been in a 23-month relationship with Dr. Paul and his wonderful staff. Um, and I have lost 140 pounds. Um, much of what I've done is um, well. You know, what, I'm gonna I'm gonna let you let you talk first. Hi everyone. My name is Maria, and I had my surgery on October 28th of 2014. I've lost a total of 106 pounds so far. And I'm still losing, and I feel great. Um, as part of the excess body weight, uh, the excess body skin, um, I was pretty big, and um, I don't have that problem. I dedicated myself to exercising, doing a lot of exercising after the surgery. Of course, it was after I went to see Dr. Paul a month later. Um, then he told me that now I can resume my normal activities, and that's when I started exercising, and exercising helps a lot. It helps a lot to put everything back into place, and as far as the excess skin is concerned, I don't have any. I have a bit here and there, but nothing major, nothing that I can't work on, and of course, um, as far as the hair loss is concerned, my hair did thin out. It did thin out, um, but I started, it was, it was weird, but um, he had mentioned when I had come, he had mentioned something called biotin that a lot of people tend to use it's for hair, skin, and, and nails. And you tend to use it. I started it three months before my surgery, and it helped a lot with my weight loss. Uh, I guess it's not a proven thing, but for me it did work. I did start my biotin pills. I bought them at Walmart, and I would drink one pill a day, and I still do to this day. And uh, my hair loss was very minimal. Very, I mean, it did lighten up, and now it's growing back again, but um, it, it was minimal. I did not see that much hair loss or that much hair thinning um, that I think I would have seen, if I would have probably experienced if I wouldn't have taken the biotin pills. At least they worked for me. Um, as far as the dumping is concerned, yeah, we all get curious and we all think we can beat it. And we do um, sneak something here or there and then go through the dumping and it is killer. It is a killer. Um, I experienced it once. I thought that I um, could have that munchkin that I wanted to have so bad. And I did eat one and I felt like I was dying. Um, you feel, I felt, I, I mean, my vision is like, you could, I could see like total darkness. It felt like, like I wasn't even in my body. And I did the vomiting. I did the uh, shaking. I did the sweats. And I said, hmm, I don't want to do that again. Because you all, we all get curious. We all get curious. But of course, everybody's different and everybody will experience it in a different way. But um, it was the best um, thing that I had done because I had been always small all my life. But after I had four children, I kind of dedicated myself to my children and forgot who I was and then didn't take care of myself anymore. And, um, but then um, afterwards, I said, wait a second, now I have to do this for myself. Because now I have a grandchild and I need all my energy to run after her. And I, now I feel fantastic. Now I, it's good to go into the store and be able to fit into normal size. I used to be a size 22, 24. And now I'm a size 10. And it all happened within a year. But of course, it's the dedication that you give also with, with um, the proper eating and with the proper exercises. You, the, more, the more energy you get, I mean, the more better you feel, the more you're going to want to exercise, the more energy you're going to have to do the things that you couldn't do when you were bigger. And I was looking at a picture the other day of myself. And I saw a picture and I said, wow, I can't believe I had no one around me had noticed how big I was, or I had not noticed how big I was, but it's because you see yourself every day, and they see you every day. 
But once you um, lose the weight and you say, wow, I can't believe I was that big. But um, you do feel good. You do feel good. It's a very good decision. I had the gastric bypass and I feel great and I recommend it to anyone who is really serious about losing the weight and feeling better about yourself. I would suggest that you get it done because I have no regrets for it. And um, it was just a marvelous experience for me. I did, I was up and about the next day. Um, Dr. Paul came to see me early in the morning at 8 a.m. and uh, he asked me if I was tolerating water. I was really thirsty. I sipped water all day and all night. And um, then um, afterwards the next day, he asked me if I can tolerate the shake and I did tolerate the shake, and I was home the next day. And uh, at home, the only uncomfort that I felt wasn't so much any any pain. My uncomfort was, of course, because I was big, moving from side to side in the bed at night. That was that required a little bit, you know. That that was a little hard. But after a few days, that was over and done with, and no pain, no nothing. And it was it was a good experience. So, like I said. If you're serious about losing weight and feeling better, I suggest that you get it done. Here's my story. <laughs> December 27th, 2013. 300 and probably just a little bit over 300 pounds. Uh, I went in for surgery. Just prior to surgery, four blood pressure pills every day. Um, high cholesterol, cholesterol medication. Diabetes medication, sleep apnea machine. I couldn't walk more than 15, 20 feet without being out of breath. Today, I stand before you 23 months out, and uh, I just finished my seventh 5K. Now, if anyone would have told me two years ago, or a little over two years ago, that I was going to be physically active, and running a 5K, I probably would have keeled over from laughter and probably had a heart attack. I, I must say, through this whole process, the staff at the hospital, the staff at Dr. Paul's office, phenomenal. They have all the right people in place, and a system in place to help you on your journey. Um, again, like I said, I, I, I was a mess physically, um, emotionally, I was a mess. I couldn't do anything. Uh, today, like I said, I'm into all the stuff. I've got more energy. Now I'm doing washes at 10, 11 o'clock at night, and my wife's saying, what the heck are you doing? I said, well, I've got this energy now that I don't know what to do with. So now I'm doing all the housework. So I'm like a house husband slash speaker. Um, again, the people who are very important, Dr. Pohl, Dr. Blumenthal, Holly, the entire staff, one of the most important people on your journey is going to be your dietitian. Our dietitian, my wife and I, because my wife had the surgery done uh, December, I'm sorry, January 13th of this year, and she's lost a considerable amount of weight. But through the whole journey, our dietitian has helped us. She's almost like our counselor, psychiatric counselor. She helps us through all the issues. I have never had, I thank the good Lord, I have never had the dumping syndrome. I think my wife has. She won't tell me if she has or not because she's the sweet tooth in the family. But um, I haven't had that. Um, but before we can change this, before we can lose the weight, before we can change this, we have to change here. And I think that's the biggest part of the journey. That was the biggest part of the journey for me, is to get over you know, all of the bad habits. Eating at 7, 8, 9, 10 o'clock at night. Eating my whole meal, the, the, all my calories at 10 o'clock at night. That was, that was a big thing for me. I, I worked second shift, so that was when I ate. Um, that's a habit you have to break. You have to get out of it early. Um, many different habits. Um, before the surgery, I heard all these terrible things, especially from family. Family, there's going to be something that's going to support you 110%, and there's going to be others that are going to say, well, what do you want to do that for? You're taking the easy way out. And let me tell you something, this is not the easy way out. A lot of dedication, a lot of hard work, a lot of sacrifice, but it's worth it. So um, 
if, if you are interested and if you want to do this, it's one of the best things that I've ever done, besides marrying my lovely wife, because I'm sure it's going to be on tape. Hi, honey. <laughs> uh, besides marrying my lovely wife, this was the best thing that I've ever done. So if you have any questions, please don't hesitate. I'm, gonna, I'm here right now, and I'm going to be here afterwards as well. Go ahead. What kind of surgery did you I, I'm sorry. I had the gastric bypass. Questions. This is this is your opportunity. He's had it. We didn't. So we. There are no questions <laughs> off limits. So. And she had the bypass too. She's shy back there, but she'll answer too. Yes. Are you off all your medications? Now? I am off all of my medications. The only thing I take now is a daily vitamin, the uh, the multivitamin that is prescribed by the, the the doctor tells me to take because I'm, you know, I'm not getting all the nutrition and the, the vitamin that I'm supposed to take, and I'm on a B12, uh, and a vitamin D. That's it. The only complaint I do have, there's two complaints actually, two complaints. <laughs> One, I'm always cold. Yes. And two, yes. my rear end, I'm always achy sitting down all the time because it's bone against the chair. <laughs> there's nothing, there's no padding. <laughs> oh, see, I started the complaints, it's gonna take me off the stage now. No, go, go, go. No, no, I have the solution. The sweater and a pillow. <laughs> Of course. Of course. Sweater, I need a couple of pillows. The sweater, though, I, of course, my heating bill last year was terrible, so I can just imagine what it's going to be like this year. Because my wife is always hot, and I'm, now I'm always cold, and I've got, I've got a bathroom on in the middle of the day. So how, how, how the heck do you live like this? But uh, th those are the only two complaints that I have. Hi. Yes, hi. What's, if you go to a restaurant normally, what's your normal meal? What would you pick at a restaurant? Well, actually, now, the wife and I usually order one meal. And we split it. But I order, you know, uh, I, I, went through a, I went through a point where when I first got out of surgery, uh, my sugar would drop very, very low. And that's because I was totally keeping carbs. I mean, all I was eating was protein, protein, and protein. And my body just couldn't handle that. I needed a little bit of good carbs. And that's the thing that you need to learn through the surgery, after the surgery, through your dietitian is what's the difference between a good carb and a bad carb? So I'm on good carbs now uh, when I have my meals. Very small meals, and that was another thing. When I, when I first, first contemplated the surgery, I was watching all these YouTube videos, and I'm trying to get as much information as I can, and they're all talking about these, what they call food funerals. Because everybody thinks that they're never gonna be able to eat again. You know, they're all going to the Chinese restaurant, and by the way, there is no good Chinese, okay? There is no good Chinese food. They load that stuff up with MSG and sugar and salt and everything else. Um, but the point I'm trying to make is that I was into the food funeral. So I'm never going to be able to eat this again. I was afraid. You know, I'm going to be eating like a bird, like a, like uh, three pieces of rice a day, and I'm, that's going to be my life for the rest of my life. But that's not the case. You will eat again. You do eat again. You eat normal food. You don't have to suck down protein shakes for the rest of your life. So you, you do eat again, and you do resume normal activity. Um, the only thing I caution you on is that you're going to be, for most people, there's going to be this huge resurgence of energy. So you're going to have to channel that into ladies, housework, and guys, projects around the house. So that's, what, that, that's to, to make sure that, that you channel that energy properly, um, because otherwise you get yourself in trouble. Yes, go ahead. Are the supplements prescription, or can you buy them? Uh, you buy them right over the counter. How long from when you decided to have the surgery did it take to have your surgery? Uh, when I, in earnest, I actually came to two seminars. Two seminars. Uh, after, when I finally made the decision, I signed up and I saw the doctor for the initial visit. I think it was probably six or seven months. Because I had, I was, I was switching health plans at the beginning of the next year, so I had to get it done. Because otherwise, it would have had to make me go through all the steps again. So I didn't want to have to do that. So, but it was like I said, it's the best thing I've ever done. The, the staff here, here at the hospital is is wonderful, wonderful. Yes. Did your insurance company pay for all of it, or was there any out-of-pocket expenses? For you? The only out-of-pocket expense that I had, I believe, was the. Uh, a co-pay of like four hundred and eighty dollars, because I had a good insurance plan at the time. So, 
Any other questions? Thank you very much, Dr. Paul. Thank you very much again. Thank you for coming again. Oh, and uh, Dr. Blumenthal, Paul, I am very happy to hear that I can now, after being 22 months out, I can get pregnant. <laughs> Thank you. All right, thanks, Paul. All right. Go ahead. Oh, oh I'm sorry. Before yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, I know. I, was, I thought you missed something. I, I brought this so that you can actually see. This is my prop. I fit in one leg now. So. Very good. Thank you very much.